Hey guys, Sam here from keycommerce.com. In this video, you're going to learn what are keyword match types in Google, how you can use them, and the theory behind them. It's really important to know this to be a better media buyer, a better PPC manager, and just get more profits out of your campaigns for your e-commerce store. So let's just uh, draw an example here. So we have the Google search results or the search bar. So you go to google.com, like over here, and you type in the, in the bar, like women's shoes. I wanna buy women's shoes. Google is then going to present with you, present you the actual search results. So it's going to have the paid results here and then the organic results down the bottom. Now, we care about these paid results, of course, because we have a Google Ads account. That's what we're doing. We're trying to get the paid results. Well, how does Google decide if they're going to show your ad when someone searches for women's shoes? Well, you probably know this. It's about your bid. It's about your quality score, your ad relevancy. It's all about your ad rank. That's how the auction works. But how does Google actually know if you're even going to contribute or participate in that auction. Well, Google actually looks at all your keywords, looks at the match types for those keywords, and decides if your ads, your keywords, are eligible to trigger your ads to run in that auction. So it's really, really important to understand this. So that's, it's like, it's the little bit here that, that gives us eligibility to run in the auction. So if someone searches for women's shoes, we can use a broad match keyword. I'm going to go over the different match types in a second. We can use, uh, or we can even use exact match women's shoes. If someone searches for women's shoes, we're going to show our ad. And the different match type we use, we're going to use that depending on how free we want uh, the difference in what people search for and our keywords to be. Let me explain this in a, a bit better, I think. So, so this is actually a table provided by Google. I'll put a link to this in the description and it just uh, shows the, the four different types of match types. It must've been in the last week or two that they've actually added in broad match. That, that's been around for years, but they never really, uh, actually maybe they did provide this. They don't provide that when you actually create your keywords in the account. They don't tell you about this, but this is like the fourth, it was like a secret sort of a keyword match type you can use. I'm gonna go through them all now. So the first one is broad match. Google loves if you use broad match because it gives them a lot more control um, to show to participate, for you to participate in more ad auctions um, than something like exact match. So imagine this is more free. This is much more restrictive. It, this is this this up here gives Google more control. Down here it gives you more control. And there's benefits of doing both. But for starting off with broad match, if you if someone searches for women's hats. Um, then, and that's your keyword in your account, women's hats. Well, then if someone searches for buy ladies hats, they're going to, your, your ad is going to show potentially, it's going to be eligible to show women's clothing. See how different, like if, if, if you sell women's hats and someone searches for women's clothing, they're going to see your ad. So you need to think, okay, do I really want to show my ad if someone is searching for women's clothing? And maybe you think, oh, that might be a great keyword, but think about it for a second. Think about the intent there. Someone searching for women's clothing. It's very, very general. They might not even know what they want. It might be someone that doesn't know what they want to buy for for like their wife or girlfriend or friend or whatever. Um, so they're searching for just women's clothing or women's scarves. If you only sell hats, you don't sell any scarves, but Google's still going to show. So Broadmatch has its uses because you can use it if you want to do a lot of research, discovery campaigns, where you want to see what people are searching, but also it allows you to get longer tail, more varied, varied uh, search queries for your keywords. Um, and often a lot of those search queries are going to be cheaper. They're going to be a lot cheaper than uh, bidding on exact match. And that's just the way it works. Uh, but going down further, you can use uh, broad match modified. So, and it, how do you actually use this? So in your account, when you add your keywords for broad match, you just put the keyword in there, just women's hats. It, for broad match modified, you see here these little symbols. That's the that's the actual match type symbol. What you use to tell Google what we're doing. And you see here, just like I said, I used uh, this little terrible diagram here. But basically, it's like it's like a little lever that allows you to choose how you actually. You can pull it and say, how, what are the settings that I want to do in my account to show for these keywords? It gives you an element of control, just like changing your location settings. This is not changing where people are, where you're targeting, but it's what they actually use to search. And you know, in shopping campaigns, I talk a lot about shopping campaigns on this channel. You, you can't use keywords. That you can use negative keywords, which operate in a similar way, but the opposite where it stops uh, showing, being eligible for that auction if someone searches for specific things. But largely Google uses your product feed to, to, to create own, its own keywords in a sense. Um, so you can't actually choose your keywords. But for search campaigns, there are match types. So the next one is broad match modifier, broad match modified. Um, and this is just adding a plus sign. And you see here that um, it, it basically means that 
Google can swap around the, the those keywords. So it can have hats, women, or if that's an actual thing, but it can also add, add some more uh, variation, but not as much variation as the broad match. This is what a lot of media buyers have, have used for a long time and they've avoided using broad match just because it does give, give a bit more relevancy, a bit more um, control because you'll see here, um, women's scarves and hats. So hats have to be in the search query. You're no longer showing for just women's scarves, but women's scarves and hats, then you're gonna show. So these all have hats, see how they all have hats? And there's also, you can have some bit of variation of the word hats, but largely it's all you know about that, but it also adds other, other terms in and around the different terms. Now this is compared to phrase match down here, which is using these, these quotes. I don't actually know the real <laughs> exact word for that, uh, but women's hats in quotes. Basically that means that women's hats has to be there together in as a one thing. Um, oh, they've actually changed it. So this is something else I got to go over. So they've actually, um, and this has made a lot of people really upset, but they've changed the, the, the rule here where close variations can, that, that syn synonyms can be substituted in there. This made a lot of people real angry because it's Google's way of just taking more control back. Um, so that's why this one here, ladies hats on sale, but they've got the synonym of ladies for women's. Um, and put that in there. Maybe you don't, for maybe a lot of people that doesn't they don't care about that. Uh, but a lot of diehard old school uh, media buyers that that's a big deal. But don't worry about that too much. But you see here um, how they put that in there as well. So you see here it's getting close more and more. The main point here to, to think about to, to see is that here it's so much more general. Women's scarves, women's clothing, and as you get further down here it gets much more about the hats and about women, okay? So that's, it gets much more specific. And then when you get down to the very bottom, which is exact match, which is in these square brackets, that's when it's much more targeted towards women's hats. Women's hats, ladies' hats, hats for women, hats, women, see? It doesn't have buy, it doesn't have blue, it doesn't have on sale, no, that exact match is very specific. And and so you see here, that sort of, spe that spectrum of super broad all the way down to exact, where this is gives Google more control so they can start showing you for all these other queries. And then down here, it's getting much more specific. Okay, so why, when would you actually use this for your e-commerce store? This is really, really important because I have seen some campaigns with super broad succeed amazingly, but that did take time to let Google do a lot of optimization, especially with an automated bidding strategy. But a lot of people, especially in a competitive niche, they love to use exact match or phrase match just because maybe there's a high volume of searches already. So they're not worried about being limited by the total volume of searches, but also the keywords are much more expensive. So they wanna make sure when they get a click, they're getting certain people. There's a whole market of people searching and those clicks can be very expensive. They only want blue hats blue women's hats. That's all they want because maybe that's all they sell. So, so if someone searches for red women's hats, they don't want that. They, they only want blue women's hats and they don't have the budget to spend on red hat searches, only blue hats. You see here, it basically is, allows you to keep that control and have a stronger lever on what exactly you want for those search queries. Now, why would you even use match types in the first place? Well, this is the real theory underneath all of this that I need to communicate really clearly is that the search query that someone uses indicates their intent. So someone searching for buy hats for women, that has very high intent, bottom of the funnel, they're looking to buy hats online. Someone searching for just women's clothing, that could be someone searching for some like a pro school project. It could be someone that's um, just looking for random gift ideas and they're just looking around. Maybe they just wanna know what women's clothing looks like. You see here, it's really hard to tell the intent you can give some, you can you can get an idea, but the more, you know, certain keywords or certain queries are gonna give you a better idea of what that person wants when they're searching. And this is the real power behind Google, is that when someone searches for women's hats, you see here, even all the different, um, certainly the suggestions here, Kmart, these are, because I'm in Australia right now, so Kmart, um, you know, that's in the US as well, but. There's shops here, there's Australia location, another shop for big heads. So they're looking for size, looking for like old. So that's definitely not a good, unless you're selling like old school hats, even then people searching for women's hats, 1900 or 1890s, maybe they're looking to go to a fancy dress party or maybe they're doing some project or they're just interested. They've watched some YouTube video about past or something and they're like, I wonder what, what women wore as, as a hat back then. You know, so this is this tells you about the intent. But if I just search for women's hats, of course there's gonna be people um, bidding on in the shopping um, you've got people bidding on the search. So these people here, whatever they're putting there, they're gonna, you know, they're, they're using match types to show their search ad for this query. And if I, if I search for 1900s, see there's no more ads. 
Maybe there's some ads maybe later, but even Google knows that it, 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 from its own data, it knows, okay, maybe we shouldn't show ads to this guy or whoever it is searching because these people use, someone searching for that usually doesn't purchase. They're just looking for something like this. That's why they're showing me all these designs and images and stuff like that. So while Google uses their own data, we also want to take control as well and use match types to decide for ourselves. So that's guys, that's how match types work. So back to this diagram, it allows us to control which for, for which search queries that someone searches in here, when do we actually show our ads? And, and another part that I haven't spoken about is the reason this exists is because it's efficient. Because if Google said, okay, and this, I believe this is actually what Google was like, it, Google Ads was like before it was called Google Ads, back in the very early days where you had to ring up and say, I want to bid on these different keywords. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, that's where I, like speaking to someone that had been around for a very long time, you know, that was like a long time before before me, um, you know, that's like 2000 or whenever it was, um, but you had to ring up and say, I want to bid on this keyword. And it was very, very manual process. Well, imagine if, especially if you've got a store that's doing six, seven figures on Google Ads per month, and, and we're working with those sort of stores, it would be take so long to 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 do all the media buying because every single keyword and there because there are so many variations of all the keywords even just spelling mistakes it allows you to show your ads for those queries even if you don't know those queries exist yet and that's really important because the market's always changing but also you can't think like you don't know every single search term that that your customers are going to use and that's just, that takes a lot of years and years of market research and even then it changes over time. So this actually is a really good thing. Anyway, guys, that's how match types work in Google Ads. I hope that was helpful. If this video was helpful. Please let me know in the comments below. Give it a like. Check out my other videos. I do a lot of videos on Google search, Google shopping ads and growing your e-commerce store. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.